so you're a Laker fan. All revved up and ready to ride the bandwagon. Well, my friend, the wheels fell off in game one. Don't stop my high. I'm all broke down. Jazz, the only game in town, and it's always a carnival outside the Delta Center. Especially when the NBA's version of an acrobatic team is in to perform. The Lakers certainly have a tight focus on tonight after game one. But whether you're a Laker or a Salt Laker, game two tonight in this Western Conference final looms very, very large. Hi again, everyone, with Doc Rivers. This is Kevin Harlan. The Lakers were thoroughly embarrassed in game one, shooting 29% from the floor, the worst playoff loss in Laker franchise history. But you know what, Doc? They've been down this road before. Yeah, everyone remembers game one in the Seattle series where they struggled, came out in game two and just had a great defensive effort, and that's what they're going to have to do again tonight. Now, in game one here, everyone talked about the Lakers and their offense. I think they should be far more concerned about their defense. The 30 first 40 possessions, 30 scores for Utah, that's not good if you're a Laker fan. The Lakers had virtually no offensive interference. They allow the Jazz to do whatever they want. They have to change that tonight. So Utah runs a very precise, a precision offense. What does Los Angeles do defensively tonight? Well, obviously, you want to put more pressure. You have to put pressure on John Stockton. You can't allow him to just sit back and pick you apart. The second thing they want to do, they want to be more physical. They don't want to allow the Jazz to go and set clean picks. They want to get in their way and use their body. If they do that, they have a better shot. All right, enough of this defensive stuff. When you talk about the Lakers, everybody wants to talk about their great offense. Well, their offense was awful also in game one, but they had open shots. Well, Shaq has 17 turnovers tonight probably not Eddie Jones to score better so will Nick Van Exel but to keep them they have to run the basketball we're talking about half court for them to win they have to get into the open court this place is spinning you know in the NFL they say the Green Bay Packers have the best fans while well, the NBA they are here in Salt Lake they believe in their jazz game two is next There are a lot of things out there that will make your heart beat faster. This is one of them. Jeep Cherokee. With full-time select track four-wheel drive and quadrilink suspension, it's sure to quicken anybody's pulse. Now get Jeep Cherokee with all these features, including air conditioning at no extra charge. be going back to singing Bob's for a long, long time. Singing Bob ought to train. 
With AT&T One Rate International, it costs $1.82 to make a 14-minute call from the U.S. to Canada. With 10321, it's $2.80. With AT&T One Rate International, it costs $1.50 to make a 10-minute call from the U.S. to the U.K. With 10321, it's $6.40. Surprised? Nine out of ten calls from home cost less with One Rate International without dialing extra digits. And that could make a world of difference. So give us a call today. The NBA Playoffs on TNT, brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. By Jeep, makers of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Cherokee, and Wrangler. By Fila, a new attitude, new performance, change the game. And by Holiday Inn Express, who invites you to stay smart. In the shadow of the Wasatch Range, welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Game 2, Western Conference Finals, the NBA Playoffs on TNT. The Los Angeles Lakers losing Game 1, 112 to 77, a 35-point loss. And tonight, they need a big game from Nick Van Exel. Was only one of nine. A big game from Van Exel could be crucial tonight for L.A. Yeah, I think they really need a big game from their backcourt. You know, Eddie Jones and Nick Van Exel struggled. They need one of those two guys to really have a big game, and they would love both of them, too. For the opening lineups, the Delta Center's PA announcer is Dan Roberts. As the Cavs are hosting the Los Angeles Lakers, introducing the starting lineup for the Lakers. Starting it forward, wearing number five at 6'10 from Alabama, Robert Ory. Starting forward, number 17 at 6'7 from North Carolina, Rick Fox. Starting center, number 34 at 7'1 from LSU, Shaquille O'Neal. Starting guard line number two at 6-1 from Arkansas Little Rock, Derek Fisher. And at guard number six at 6-6 six, six from Temple, Eddie Jones. The Lakers are coached by Del Harris. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Ever Midwest Division title. Unbelievable. Magic down the alley. Goes to three. Blackbeat. Picks up the magic. Blackbeat. Oh, baby. Big mark everywhere. Classic, as seen by the white-tailed dragonfly, with a refined interior and available select track full-time four-wheel drive, it's a great way to cross remote territory, no matter how you look at it. 
even if you're a green tree frog. Now get Jeep Cherokee and all these features, including air conditioning, at no extra charge. For a really big ball of twine, head to Darwin, Minnesota. For a really big sale, head to Ace. Pick up a four and a half cubic foot Rubbermaid lawn cart or a two horsepower Black & Decker lawn edger. The Ace really big sale. Now that's big. No multi-million dollar contracts. No victory laps. Not even a winner's circle. But if you think these weekend warriors who run the SCORE Desert Championship Series take anything for granted, think again. Which is exactly why they run with the Duralast battery from AutoZone. A battery so tough, so dependable, we back it with a two-year free replacement guarantee. The next time you hit the road, don't settle for anything less. Have you seen the Elf? The Elf does its magic with advanced photo system film. Presto, it's loaded. Now take super shots in three different sizes. Have you seen all the Elves? From Canon. Landing soon in perfect fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, please fashion your seatbelts. Magic? Fashion's in the air at Old Navy. First class fashion. <laughs> Woof. Woof. For me, it's Paris, Milan, and Old Navy. Shop there often? Darling, it's a fashion dynasty. The Delta Center in Salt Lake City, Utah, filled to capacity tonight. Game two. Lakers and, si and the Utah Jazz. Here are two teams that played each other four times in the regular year. With Los Angeles enjoying some pretty good success. But in game one, it was all Utah. Oh, Utah. And the beginning of this game is really important. Dale Harris said the reason they struggled mightily on defense is because their offense struggled and they kind of sap the power out of them. He said they really need to get off early offensively. So Fisher works on Stockton as Eddie Jones takes himself off the floor. Fisher from Fox for two. Lakers on top. Well, already they're cheering. <laughs> you know, they, they made the first shot. They have to be happy. They missed 11 of their first 12 shots on Saturday. It's already an improvement. Carl Malone ties the game at two. Well, I'll tell you, it took Carl Malone uh, some time to really get into his playoff flow, but he's in it now. And in the last three games, he has just been terrific. He shot 44% Malone has in the playoffs this year. Fox into O'Neal against Foster. Shaq with an easy spin move for well, two. You can see the difference. In game one, he waited. He caught the pass and waited to see where the trap was coming from. Right there, he grabbed the ball and he went. I don't, he's going right away. He said he was a little tennis. Yeah. That time showing the patience that the Lakers feel they need. Lakers on top by two. Malone and a foul inside on Utah. Well, two adjustments already in the game. You can look at Shaq on the post here. First, look where Shaq catches the ball. He said that he needed to establish better position. That's great position. Stockton picks up the foul. Here comes Rick Fox driving on Russell, leaning into Stockton. Rebound by Foster. Here comes Russell. Russell the other way. Up to the wall. Robert Ory picks up the foul. Well, this is the other thing we were talking about. Watch John Stockton right here fight and fight. This is what Utah were, was allowed to do in game one. The Lakers do not want that to happen now. They want to get into Stockton's way offensively and defensively. They want to put a body on it. So here's Carl Malone, who as a rookie in the NBA, began shooting 44% from the free throw line. Now he's up to 77%, a huge difference. Yeah, and, and Gary Sloan said, I'd love to take the credit, but I can't. He said, I simply said, Carl, you want to be a better player, you have to make free throws. And it was Carl Malone who locked himself in the gym and did the work. And Shaq probably needs to do the same thing for yeah, Los Angeles. I think he's doing that. You can see him improving, not a lot, but he is improving. Well, Larry Bird say in playoff time, it's free throws and defense that make the difference. Well, if that's true, then you know Shaq has the defense. Yeah. <laughs> now he gets the free throw. <laughs> All right, yeah. good shape. Long goes one of two, four of three Lakers. Fisher, known for his defense, hits his second shot from outside. He is two of two. Well, you can see the guards on the Lakers, they want to be more aggressive. They want to attack the baskets. And, you know, quite simply, they just want to make shots. 
On his second, Jones and Jones, a defensive specialist, a ruthless defensive player, but picks up a foul as he lunges inside for Del Harris's Los Angeles Lakers. He's quietly becoming one of the better defenders in this league. Now, that last play was a silly foul, and he can't afford to get in foul trouble. He's another guy they need to get off early. You can set a tempo for this game. On the set with two minutes gone here in the first quarter. Malone on O'Neal, and Malone lunging inside the miss. Ori was there, the second foul called on Robert Ori. And Dell Harris may have to go to his bench, and he does. Well, already you can see what the Jazz are doing right here. They're putting the ball on the floor. You can see the pressure. Eddie Jones is really, they're doing differently what they didn't do in game one. But right here, that's a problem for Shaq to guard Carl Malone that far away from the bucket. You know, Dale Harris said, it's tough for our big guys to come that far away from the bucket. They're used to defending the bucket. The Jazz have guys who can shoot at the power forward spot and at the center spot. So Corey Blount comes in. He was the X factor, that intangible factor against Seattle. Here's Malone with his second trip already to the line tonight with just a little over two minutes gone and nobody is to the free throw line more than Carl Malone. Well, he has that body one. He has a great jump shot too and he can put the ball on the floor three. That means you have lots of problems. <laughs> a lot Many. of problems. He's got, the, he's got that feel for the game. Things you can't teach, but obviously 13 years in the league, it's going to come to you. Yeah, exactly. You know, I would say in 13 years from now, we'll be saying the same things about Shaq. Maybe more so. And Kobe Bryant yes. right on down the list. Malone has accounted for all five Utah points. Lakers on top by one. Fisher has gone two of two. Maneuvering inside. Jones gets by Hornacek. He launches. And the rebound inside is smeared by Russell. Here comes Stockton. Off to Foster. Get out of the way when Foster's right. See, I just think that is a problem for the Lakers. Greg Foster can really run the floor, and there's no way that Shaq can beat Greg Foster down the floor. The Jazz know that, and they're looking for him. Utah has the lead. Jones lost it working into Stockton, and Utah has numbers ahead. Oh, so right. oh. There was an inch to get that ball through, and he got it through. Utah's on top by three. Fox to Jones. The screen by Blount. Jones to Blount. Little bit of inside and knocked away by Malone. Utah with some nice transition on this play. Yeah, if you turn the ball over against the Lakers or, or against the Jazz, you're in trouble. You can see it. You get the ball in John Stockton's hands, good things will happen. And you can see... Jeff Hornacek right there, just flat-footed on defense. Eddie Jones has to do a better job of that, of putting the ball on the floor, beating Hornacek off the dribble. I think he can do it. Corey Blount, 57% for the free throw line in the playoffs. He is taking time effectively away from Eldon Campbell because of his play in that Seattle series. Well, I think he plays off Shaquille O'Neal a little bit better. He understands his role. I don't know if Eldon Campbell does. Already 5-0 in the fast break points. Now, Jerry Sloan said, we want to run. We just don't want the Lakers to run. One is that picked up by the smaller Fisher. Malone will joust now with Blount. Shot clock at seven for Carl Malone. I mean, what do you do? He's got seven of Utah's 11 points for Jerry Sloan. Fox with Russell there. Jones picked up by 35-year-old Hornacek. Double-teamed O'Neal and somehow goes in. Somehow, it's the key in that. But, but again, Shaq gets great position on the post. And even if the Jazz wanted to help, they couldn't. You let Shaquille O'Neal get position like that, you're in trouble. Two-point game. Stockton picked up by Jones. And here's Malone. And a shove and a foul. And it's called inside on Eddie Jones, who picks up his second foul. I want you to watch John Stockton. They are going to help. But when Shaq gets it that deep, there's no help that will save you. He's going to get to the bucket, and he did. Jones has two, and Robert Ory is on the bench with two, and here comes Kobe Bryant joining Blount, Fisher, O'Neal, and Fox. And that's big for two reasons. One, it didn't allow Eddie Jones to establish himself offensively, and two, it takes a great defender off the floor. That one silly foul early in the game came back to Hornet. Well, the precise offense of Utah working well. Malone with a rare miss. Rebound by Fox. They'll push it the other way. Jazz back good on defense. And outside to Bryant. 
Burke dazzle you with his moves. Seven and a half to play in the first quarter. You can see Dale Harris right when Kobe Bryant caught the ball, swing the ball. He wants him to get the ball right back to Shaq. Malone lunges and knocks the ball away, and the shot clock has riddled its way to four. Well, listen, if you're going to throw the ball to Shaq, you have to allow the cutters to play it through. Carl Malone was still standing there when uh, Fisher threw the ball into the post. Not smart offense by the way. Carl Malone has seven. Utah, an early two-point lead. Really, Tim McGraw's jeans? The genuine article. How'd you get them? You'd be surprised what some people do for a cold Bud Light on a hot day. Yeah, right. Bud Light is proud to sponsor Tim McGraw. I think we're still undecided. Looks like another night at the Holiday Inn for you folks. After Holiday Inn's billion dollar renovation, everything looks better, even jury duty. Not even Jesus could save them all. Mickey Rourke and Dan Futterman star in a powerful new film about a boy living on the edge, thicker than blood. World premiere Sunday, May 31st at 8, only on TNT, the best movie studio on television. Shaq's going to try to make his moves quick now. You know, he was waiting for them to trap him, which he cannot do. He just got to go ahead and play his game. They trap him, then kick it out. You know, the last game, he'll tell you, he just didn't have a feel for the ball. He was losing the ball in situations where he usually doesn't lose it. So, you know, he'll get a better outcome from him, and then we feed off him, and then you get a better outcome from the rest of the guys. Yeah, and I think, Kevin, you got to remember, they came out of a series against Seattle where they were sending two and three men on Shaq. I think Shaq was still waiting for Gary Payton to come down and drop. There was no Payton. There was no one. Tonight, two quick times, he got it and went right away. Fisher has hit his first two, but he misses that three. There was just four seconds left on the shot clock. We're back with Utah on top by two. They've got Russell, Hornacek, Foster, Malone, Stockton into Russell. Picked up. Nice lasso inside by Corey Blount. You know, as well as the Jazz are playing right now, they're only up two points. The Lakers not playing that great. And now Shaq's scoring there could be a tie score. So they're happy right now. And Shaq's doing exactly what Dale Harris wanted him to do. He's establishing great post position. And everyone's worried about Shaq, but they forgot about Blount, who ties the game at 11. But that's the effect of Shaquille O'Neal. His effects will ripple and ripple and ripple. Inside, it's Malone. Outside, Hornacek for two. Rebound by Blunt. Quick outlet caught by Fox. Russell's in front of him. Six and a half in the first quarter. And a quick foul called on Brian Russell, who's been a wonderful factor in the playoffs last year. And, of course, this year as we check in with Reggie Theus. All right, Kevin, in that last timeout, Dell Harris was talking about we have to reverse the ball into Shaq. we got to get him into the offense. So much so, they missed a great opportunity with Fox with a mismatch on uh, Hornacek down in the low post. But Shaq is the man. They want him to have the ball. Guys? All right, Reggie. Brian twirling inside for two, and he had a couple guys draped on both shoulders. Well, he's the one guy who actually played well in game one. He will be effective in this series because if it comes down to half-court offense, he's one of those guys that can create his own shot. Shaq's the other guy. And he's off the bench, taking the place of Eddie Jones with two. Malone inside, battling with one. Well, again, we're talking about position. Carl Malone got great position. And that's a foul. See, I don't like that, you know. Carl Malone looked at Billy Oates, and he basically pointed, I'm getting hit on the elbow. I, I don't understand why the quick test. Here's Rick Fox at the free throw line. 
In the playoffs, about 90% from the stripe, and he shows why with that hit right there in Los Angeles on top by a point. And you can see right there, Hornacek's going to have a heck of a time guarding Kobe Bryant off the dribble. As a matter of fact, most people will. Just beyond the halfway point of this first quarter, Lakers on top by one. The technical on Malone. Here comes Fisher. LA got two technicals on Saturday. Fisher into O'Neal. Oh, he got hot. You know, it's funny, I was talking to Bill Harris this afternoon, and he was saying, Doc, if we can get Shaquille O'Neal under the basket and throw it up, who can out jump him? And that's exactly what happened right Size there. Size does matter. Size matters. <laughs> Five and a half to play in the first quarter. Good screen by Foster. There's a whistle, and there's a foul. And it's called on Foster. Thought it was a great tip. He was a little bit too physical. I mean, you're talking about the easiest lob in the NBA. When I played, I had Dominique Wilkins. You can throw it anywhere. Same thing with Shaq. Just throw the ball up. He will be the only guy who gets the ball. 20 in the first. Lakers by three. Fisher has been the offensive clutch so far for Los Angeles. Well, He's what, got six with that drive right exactly. there. Exactly. The what the Lakers are doing, they're taking the Jazz players off the dribble. They're not standing around waiting for something to happen. They're being aggressive. That's exactly what Dale Harris wanted them to do. And here's Fisher, who played in back of Van Exel, and then Van Exel got injured out 11 games. They put Fisher in, a better defensive player. Van Exel comes back, but Van Exel says, leave Fisher in there. I like coming off the bench better. Yeah, he does. He's like the spark plug. You know, he's had the bad knee. He feels having less minutes has helped his play, and he's right. And the Lakers with the steal. Fox. Fisher wide open to three. Rebound by Hornacek. The Lakers get back on defense. Malone is off the side. Isley now in at point, taking the place of Stockton. Had a great game one. Malone down and whacked into by Fisher, who picks up a foul. Well, already, you know, in game one, you saw only Lakers on the floor. Tonight already, there's been a lot of jazz getting up off the floor. You can see the lob here. <laughs> Look at the position. And again, Rick Fox guarding Carl Malone is a little tough. So here's last year's MVP and Carl Malone, by the way, Michael Jordan winning the MVP today. Not much of a surprise there. <laughs> no. Although Malone had a better season this year than last year when he won the MVP. And, and I still think, and I said it last year, I think Carl Malone is clearly the second best player in the NBA. But as long as Michael Jordan is playing basketball, I think he deserves the MVP. And here's the 13th pick of the 1985 draft. Guys like Benoit Benjamin, John Conquette, Joe Klein, Keith Lee all picked ahead of Carl Malone. When you look at a bunch of the Jazz players, and Scott Layton is one of the best-kept secrets in the NBA. He's the yeah, manager, yeah. and his dad was Frank Layton, who coached this team and got them really out of the rack and off of the races many times, and then he gave way to his assistant, Jerry Sloan. Nice defense by Isley. Here comes Utah. Well, there's a case where Laker guards get a little bit too aggressive. They have to keep milking Shaquille O'Neal. Exactly what Reggie Thea said. Go to Shaq. I guarantee you this will be a play where Shaq gets it somewhere. Utah's backcourt scoreless so far. Everything has come from Los Angeles' backcourt tandem. Fisher in particular. Finds O'Neal riding rough terrain and belts into Russell. Kevin, the position, the place where Shaq Four times now, he has caught the ball right under the basket. What they're saying is if Greg Foster, a smaller guy, is going to guard Shaquille O'Neal, they're going to throw the ball up and get it. Foster just picked up the second Utah technical foul. He leaves, and Greg Ostertag will take his place. Well, already two technical fouls on the Jazz players. Now, now who's the young team? Yeah. So Foster, who thrives on emotion and says his flamboyance cannot be snuffed out, right there may be a little bit too flamboyant. Oyster tag comes in his place. The bad part about getting the early technical, as a player, I had a temper myself. I, I, I questioned every call. But if you got one in the first quarter, you had to watch yourself for the rest of the game. And sometimes uh, you were less, you were a little bit less aggressive because you, you couldn't go after people. You didn't want to go after the ref, obviously. Here's Russell in the Malone, up high for Ostertag, up and down on his pogo stick, and Pump was there along with Bryant. Here comes Fisher the other way. The work on Isley into Shaq, muscling on Ostertag. Rebound inside, claimed by Malone. Well, Ostertag's a little bigger. You see his position is not as good as when Fawcett was in the game. 
under four to play here in the first quarter. Isley, Russell, Malone, Ostertag, Hornacek, the Utah Five. A little pass by Malone. This is out of bounds. Now, see, this is the difference with a bigger center. Watch Greg Ostertag fighting for position. And that little extra 50 pounds helps when you're guarding a guy like to kill O'Neal. 16 Los Angeles. Fox for three. He drills it home. Well, they're just fine. Their confidence is sky high. You know, sometimes that's good when you lose by 30 points because you talk that up to a bad night. Lakers by nine, and this is their biggest lead tonight. Isley on the perimeter. They had the hint of a double team, and he finally whistles it inside. It was intended for Ostertag, the fifth Utah turnover. Here comes Fisher. Off to Fox. And Bryant and Plump got their signals crossed, and that ball is thrown out of bounds. Yeah, that was like playing doubles tennis, where you throw the ball right in between. Both guys thought the other guy was going to catch the basketball. You got it. Well, he's only <laughs> yeah. got two turnovers. No, I got it. Well, about playing baseball, right? I just couldn't catch a baseball regardless, so. <laughs> Russell for two. Boy, he struggled early part of this season. But since All-Star break, Brian Russell has been phenomenal. Well, he took the play to Adam Keefe. Yeah. You know, Keefe was starting. Russell came in. And Russell stretches that defense a bit because he can hit the three. He can hit the three, and he also can take people off the dribble. Shaq inside, kisses it home. Shaq's back to his old tricks again. George Carl was at home thinking, I've seen this before. He said, George Carl, the Sonic said he's the single most difficult player. Van Exel comes off the bench, makes the steal, crying inside, look at him fly, but so too did Ostertag. But he's screwed on the floor and a foul called on Rick Fox. Great hustle by Ostertag. And those are the little things they need him to do. They don't want him if he scores, so what? But they need him to hustle, block shots, put a body on Shaq, and just do things like that. It's a different game for the Los Angeles Lakers tonight. It's a meteor shower. This new one you're tracking. It's the size of Texas, Mr. President. July 1st. The United States government just has to save the world. Prepare to fight like there's no tomorrow. You think we'll get hazard pay out of this? You're already heroes. Just sit back and enjoy the ride. Bruce Willis, Liv Tyler, Van Affleck. We never quit! Armageddon, a Jerry Bruckheimer production directed by Michael Bay. Starts Wednesday, July 1st at a theater near... You're dumping me? I mean, you're a really nice guy and all. Then what is it? <laughs> Would it be that? Don't let this happen to you. Drink Keystone Light, America's never bitter beer. So there's always a great taste, never a bitter face. I've changed my mind. As if. Stop making faces. Drink Keystone. I don't even know who that is. Big number one is at it again. It's truck month at a late to four. Once a year truck savings on more than 270 trucks, all with bedlines, and backed by the leader's famous service and savings fee. It's got to be a late before. Truck on in today for super low 0.9% APR financing on Rangers. It's truck month at Kansas City's number one Ford dealer, a late before, just east of I-35 on Santa Fe, next to a late Lincoln Mercury. Coming out of game one, everyone was talking about how the big players for Utah snuffed out anything Los Angeles tried to do with their big man. But look at what the Utah guards did against the Laker guards in game one. Yeah, I thought it was the guard play that really made the difference. Really, it was the bench players. Uh, Howard Isley had a huge game, and already in game two, and just like Reggie Theus noticed, the Lakers are doing a lot of different things. Defensively, first of all, they're pressuring the ball for court. They're picking up the ball. And this is with a guy like Eddie Jones in foul trouble, not being able to score. Eddie, Eddie Fisher came out. Fisher came out right away scored points van x is going to get into the offense they are just being more aggressive this is exactly what Dale harris wanted so jones has two fouls or he has two quick fouls both very key in the seattle series and both riding the Dell harris bench right now as brian russell is at the free throw line Another one of these second-round picks that, that this Utah franchise yeah, continues to It really to is uncover. amazing. But you, you, you look at the bench. You look at the Lakers. 
And you take out Eddie Jones and you put in Corey Bryant, you take out Derek Fisher, you put in Nick Van Exel, you are a deep basketball team when you can do that. Now Van Exel runs things, O'Neal's on the bench, Blount, Bryant, Fox remains in, Campbell in there, Van Exel with a miss inside, Bryant tried to save it, out of bounds off Utah, the Lakers to inbound. Well, first play of the game, Derek Fisher comes off pick and roll, has a jump shot. First play of the game for Nick Van Exel comes off a pick and roll, has a jump shot. You can see the plan. They want their guards to be more aggressive, attack the basket. Shaq on the bench. Resting right now with two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Bryant on Hornacek. Campbell hands to Kobe Bryant, who now begins 2-2 two two with a nice display. He had 16 in game one. 16. Didn't really shoot the ball well, but what he showed in game one is that he could get to the basket. Here comes Isley, spinning on Ben Exel. Rejected by Campbell, and out of bounds it goes. And off Los Angeles with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Well, this is what they need Elton Campbell to do. When Shaq's out of the game, they tell Elton Campbell, be like Shaq. <laughs> That's a good example. Play right tennis. Here. Play exactly. tennis. Swatted back inside. Russell tried to get athletic. Yeah, that was the problem. He tried to get athletic. All he had to do there was lay it in. I think he was trying to draw the foul and the bucket, and instead he missed the bucket. He did get the foul. So many players do that. When they, they think they have a guy that can draw a foul, they forget to make the bucket at times. Turner Sports continues to bring you great coverage of the NBA playoffs tomorrow night right here on TNT. Game 2, 8 o'clock, the Pacers and the Chicago Bulls. And then Friday... It's game three of this series with Utah traveling for their first game in Los Angeles. In half-hour pregames with Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, and others will precede each of those games. How about Scotty Pippen guarding Mark Jackson? Jackson didn't know what to do. Seven turnovers. Unbelievable. At 6'7 against 6'2, that yeah. makes a difference. Here comes Van Exel. They need him to get off. He makes a move with every part of his body. He's so loose and limber. And outside to John Barry, who comes in surprisingly. Well, more shooting. They know John Barry can shoot the basketball. Bryant with an acrobatic move, his own rebound, and a fresh 24. So very little size and three guards, basically, for Los Angeles, although they're playing Bryant at the small forward. And that was a desperation rebound from Bryant because yes. the shot was so awful. <laughs> he knew he had to get it back. Van Exel tried to pull it a pass, and it ricochets off the palm of Malone. Shot clock at 9, a minute to play here in the first quarter. You know, you look at Kobe Bryant, and obviously he can get to the bucket, but when you're throwing shots up like that, you better get the rebound. Cover yourself, right? Yes. Cover yourself. Here comes Campbell, and he travels on the block into Ostertag, who's been effective in altering shots for Utah. Yeah, and that was a clear travel. Unless you can establish two or three pivot feet, then it was not travel. Otherwise, clear travel. So here's his Lakers. have turned it over three times. Lakers on top by eight. Russell on Bryant. See, I like what Jerry Sloan is doing. If, if Bryant's going to beat our players off the dribble, we're going to take him down with his 19-year-old body on the post <laughs> and try to post him up. That's smart. Was illegal defense called on Los Angeles. 48 seconds to play. That's the first illegal defense of the game. 29-21, Los Angeles on top. They're shooting 52%. Utah, 56%. Russell inside over Bryant. Rebound, Russell tapped it. Block cleans it up. Bryant will take it the other way. Well, you know the difference is when you do put Brian Russell down there, he's not used to getting post-up plays. So, yeah, you do have an advantage, but it, it takes you out of your normal offense. If I'm the Lakers, I'm happy about that. Rotating to Bryant, who crumbles under the defensive pressure of Russell. They call him for a travel. Another Del Harris Laker turnover. And Utah will get the final 24 seconds with which to work. You know, talking to Dale Harris this afternoon, he said Kobe Bryant is so talented. He wants to be good so bad, but he puts so much pressure on himself, feels that every time he touches the ball, he has to do something with it. Shot clock, game clock, basically the same. Isley tries to work them both. Blunt comes up on him. Ostertag up top. There's Malone back in. Hornacek for three. Two seconds left. Bryant, good at the goes. And Utah comes back. They trailed by nine, but at the end of one, and Shaquille O'Neal made his presence felt with 11 points. 11 points, no turnovers. Shaq is back. Lakers, 29 to 24. 
got your Bud Light, you can't hit my friend. Let's go. I'm thirsty. that will fill you up and never let you down. <laughs> Looks like you're buying. Make it a Bud Light. Coach is calling for the heat. <laughs> Yo, man, my sister got a better jump shot than that. Speaking of your sister, ain't those my shoes? Oh, oh. You got, like, ballet practice after this or something? Oh, you snapping on my shoes? Look at your sneakers. They so old, they say Air Moses on them. Oh. <laughs> well, if I was in your shoes, I'd walk on my hands. I thought your mom's got your baby shoes bronze, son. Eh? Oh, Shouldn't you take your shoes off before you clip your toenails? Oh, no, no, I ain't gonna front. Money sneakers is fat, P-H-A-T. Probably hurting all your toes. Oh. <laughs> Word up. Hey, little pumpkin, you are so cute, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Honey, look how cute. <laughs> Honey, wait a minute. I think he's gonna say something. Say hi to Dad, Dad. Say hi, Dad, Dad. Come on, zoom in. Zoom in, I think he's gonna say it. Zoom in. Hey, say hi to Dad, Dad. Say hi, Dad, Dad. Oh, Daddy, you paid too much for that camcorder. Circuit City. Experts in every department. Low prices all over the store. Somebody coming off the bench to give you a rest? Because I'm busting you down. Come on, come on. Give it up. Put your hands up for me. Foul me, man. Foul me. Show me the blood. Capital of Utah here in Salt Lake and the NBA playoffs on TNT from the Delta Center. Game two Western Conference final. It's the Lakers on top 29-24 at the end of one with Doc Rivers and Reggie Theus, Kevin Harlan. A dramatic difference in the Lakers' first quarter Saturday in what they accomplished, especially O'Neal, the banner headline in his first quarter tonight. Well, he was just aggressive. I mean, right when he caught the ball, Kevin, you can see he was going straight to the bucket. And I think what you want to look at game one, game two, uh, tonight, look at the turnovers. He had seven in game one total, but two yeah. in that first quarter. And on six Saturday. in the first half. So we begin the second quarter. Isley, Chris Morris, and he was deadly in that first game. Isley was as well. Shandon Anderson is in. Malone and Ostertag round out the five for the Jams. Eight to shoot. Isley. Malone overshot for two. And Shaquille got out a little bit high and got him. And a little late. And a little bit late. High and late is nowhere to go. And let's send it over to Reggie Theus. Well, Kevin, in that, in that timeout, Jerry Sloan said to quit whining to the referees. They have already decided before this game started that they were they were going to get fouls on us. But listen, go out and put a body on somebody. Make them call the game the way we want it to be called. Guys? That, that's a good call, Reggie. I, I agree 100% with Jerry Sloan. They are more concerned about the officials than being more aggressive to the Lakers. There's no question, Doc. And the Lakers are putting it on. They started with the trap, and they've played a different game tonight. Really turned this game emotionally around for themselves so far, even though they're losing. So Russell. On the bench, Anderson and Malone. Fans on the second free throw. It's a four-point Utah deficit. We're just seconds into the second quarter. And Axel works on Iceland. Jones back in, two quick fouls. Here comes Shaq. Ostertag is there. Shaq with some patience. Little two-man game with Fox. Nice myriad the moves by Shaq, and it doesn't go in. Robert Ory is back in, slithering inside. He can't get it to go. Ory is down. Here comes Utah with a three, making a four on three. Morris for three. And a rebound inside, claimed by Malone. Off to Anderson. Morris. A lot of congestion inside the lane. And a foul finally assessed inside. Well, obviously, the Jazz players listened very well to Jerry Sloan because you can see the effort in the last three or four times down on that play. And Robert Ory is in pain. I don't know what happened, but he is in a little pain right now. So here's Chris Morris at the free throw. It looked like he may have come down bad on his ankle. 
Wells has played with New Jersey and Utah. This is his fourth season with the Jazz. And there goes Ori, who shot over 60% in the Seattle series and has truly been one of the key ingredients to Los Angeles' success. And they, beat him yeah, and they really need his athleticism. I thought he was really effective in the Seattle series, running around, dunking. But with his quickness, he causes so many problems. Now some foul problems creeping up on Los Angeles. Four Laker starters with two fouls each. But they don't mind that. What that tells them is that they're being more aggressive. Obviously, they don't want to get in foul trouble. And it's uh, the quick release. And he pops it in. Lakers on top, 31-26. You know, Nick Van Exel told me this morning, he said, Doc, I'm not missing those wide-open shots tonight. <laughs> he didn't make No. Isley for three. Rebound by a flop. And he's got six rebounds coming off the L.A. bench. Van Exel the other way. Shaq with some interference. Fox is at 1-3. He can't knock that one in. Isley with the rebound. Yeah, I guarantee you, Dale Harris does not want to get this into a three-point shooting contest. Charge on Isley. See, now that was a test for Jerry Sloan right there because he wanted to go off. But he just gave a message that players stop complaining. You can watch it right here. And, and Nick Van Exel was moving on that. That was not a very good call. Jerry Sloan looked up to the sky and said, I can't say anything right now. <laughs> Van Exel again in on Isley and up and over for two. And Nick the Quick is knocked in two, and the Lakers on top by seven. But again, Nick Van Exel, Derek Fisher being aggressive offensively, and you really using the dribble, taking guys off the dribble. Shot clock at 10 into Antoine Plum. Plum is there. Flash of the double from Van Exel, and Plum with the miss. Plum with the rebound, but threw it away. Easily from three. Out of bounds, over the backboard, not a play. See, what happened in game one to the Lakers right now is happening in game two to the Jazz. The Jazz are missing open shots. Ball outside, rugged inside, Lakers on top. ER is coming this September to TNT. SUV. It's like no other vehicle on Earth. from O'Reilly Auto Parts. Welcome to the award-winning Moly Toyota, home of the number one selling car, the Toyota Camry. Drive away in a fully equipped Camry LE for $159 a month or take advantage of 1.4% financing or lease a new 4Runner for $249 a month. Moly Toyota is recognized as one of the top 60 Toyota dealers, offering you excellence in sales, service parts, and customer satisfaction. So thank you, Kansas City, and come home to Moly Toyota, where our customers love what we do for them every day. Well, the Game 1 heroes for the Utah Jazz, Howard Isley and Chris Morris, both off the bench, broke open Game 1 Saturday, and Doc, they orchestrated a 16-2 run. Yeah, I thought it was the role players, the energy that they came to play with walking in the arena this morning. Howard Isley said, Doc, do you think we can match the intensity that we had in game one? I said, you better. And Isley was in a slump. But here are the main contributors, Anderson, Isley, Carr, and Morris. Tonight, Los Angeles' bench has been the story. Yeah, one point from the Jazz bench so far. And you know what's interesting is you look at Chris Moore as a guy who doesn't play much, and now he's in the game playing. Shaq with a nimble move for two, and the Lakers on top, 35-26. See how quick that was? He is not waiting. You know what he's going to do? If he keeps going this quickly, he's going to force Utah to trap early, and then the Lakers can get their three-point shooters off. Here comes Van Exel, and he'll pop on the fly. Rebound by Morris. 
Los Angeles has watched Utah go all of seven from the field in the second quarter. Plus the Lakers by nine. And that's why the Lakers are getting out into the open court. You know, we talked about them not able to run in game one. Well, it's tough to run when you're taking the ball from out of the basket every single time. Tonight, they're getting stops so they can run the basketball. Game two is traditionally harder on the home team or the road team in the playoff series? I think there's always more pressure on the home team because they want to keep serve. Carl Malone was talking about it in the last series. You don't understand understand how much pressure it is. He loved playing on the road, and I think right now Utah is thinking that. Nice knock away by Ostertown. The Shaq was there, stopped in the other way. Morris will try to finish. Tapped up and in, and off by Carr, and then Anderson will clean it up. The other way. Oh, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. First, I was gonna get on Shaq for not coming down court. But the Lakers knew exactly what they were doing. They conceded the basket and went right back at them. That's something they didn't do in the first game. They hung their heads when the Jazz scored. Tonight, they're attacking. Great hustle by Ostertag. Let's send it over to Reggie Theus. And guys, after Robert Ory's last shot attempt, he came down and jammed his hip. The trainer, Gary Vitti, said that it's just a groove. Robert is back on the bench and expected to play. And they need Ory. Here's the play. Yeah, you can see right when he came down, you can see the jolt. You know, people don't know, that's 220 pounds, or I hope he weighs more than that, actually, Kevin, coming straight down. 235. Yes, yeah, I knew it. <laughs> you know, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of torque. Yeah, a lot of torque. He finished to play in the first half. Lakers on top by eight. Here's Stockton inside, scooping it up and down. See, I think what the Lakers are going to try to do is make John Stockton a score instead of a passer. And they got to. Here comes Shaquille. And he'll plow into Ostertag. Blunt got a hand on it, but Stockton claims it. And here comes Utah. Stockton on the fly for three. There was no doubt. There was no doubt he was going to take that shot. Utah has climbed back to within three points. Jones and Anderson. Inside, Fox finds the double team, Shaquille. Oh, oh, my goodness. What a play. He had two right in his face, Carr and Ostertag. And it was as if they weren't even there. But look at this. I mean, Jared Sloan says, stay between the man and the basket. Where Osatag really did, it didn't matter. Shaq just went up and dunked it anyway. Wow. That rim is still rocking. And he completes the three-point play. And Utah down by six again. Morris the other way, floating on Fox. In the car, ball is knocked away. And another Utah turnover. They have nine turnovers in this game. The boys may have left the jam, but they're hanging with the Lakers down 39-33. There's only one mile high taste. Coors, the original. <laughs> its beauty will draw you in. Its new engine will pump the bowels of your heart. And the line that separates man from machine will disappear completely. Introducing a new kind of LS400. You've never felt so connected to a car. Come on now, open up your front foot a little bit. Come on, man, you got hands up. Get with yourself. I got an idea. Wisdom doesn't come easily, nor is it easy to pass on. Now Philips has a way to create your own CD that holds everything you know about the things that interest you and share your words, pictures, and music with anyone you want. Let's go! 
anything for the pictures? The Philips CD rewritable disk drive. Create CD-ROMs on your own PC. Memorial Day weekend. You got two big races at one of the best tracks on the circuit. This is the big time. The CarQuest Auto Parts 300 Saturday and the Coca-Cola 600 Sunday. And it's only on the Superstation. home court. We've got to survive on our home court. But game number two is always important, a very difficult game. And we're going to have to make some dramatic adjustments to uh, corral this team. See the Pacers and Bulls game two Tuesday night, 8 p.m. with the pregame show and 8.30 tip at United Center. Right now, let's go back to Salt Lake. Kevin and Doc. All right, thank you. Dessert outside. Hardly the case inside. This place is rocking. 6.53 to play. We're in the second quarter with Doc Rivers and Reggie Theus, Kevin Harlan. How have you perceived the tempo in this second game? Well, Lakers favor. They very seldomly ran in game one. They're out on the break. And even if they're not running, getting fast break points, they're getting into their offense quickly. And I think that's the difference in the game. Well, threw it away. O'Neal cut. He thought he was going to station himself. Well, you can see Dale Harris yelling at Rick Fox saying, we need spacing. That's why Blunt threw the ball away. There was nobody for him to pass the ball to. Van Exel, Fox, O'Neal, Blount, and Jones as Anderson slips right by Jones. Jones the other way. Four-point game. Jones in the two, floating outside Van Exel. And Fox the three. His second miss from downtown. Picked up by Morris. Knocked away. Good Laker defense. Van Exel the other direction. Yeah, indecision. Chris Morris was going to pass it. Decided not to and lost the ball. Lakers by four. And that's the turnover story. Van Exel from three. Count it right between the eyes. And a foul called on Utah. Well, John Stockton is trying to read the pass and decides not to play defense on Nick Van Exel. And look at this collision. But look at the picks. The difference in this game is the Lakers are setting picks. They're being the more physical team. Though Eddie Jones right now is thinking, I don't know if it's worth it right now. Yeah, and, and watch John Stockton here. If you don't pressure him, he will pick you apart. Well, he's been doing it for so long. The all-time assist leader in NBA history. This free throw, and it's 42-35, Lakers by seven. They've led by nine. They've led most of the game. See, they're going to milk in and Anderson right now on the post. The reason, Eddie Jones has two fouls. So they're going to go and try to get him out of the game, and it worked. Here's the third foul. You can see it. Eddie Jones is being aggressive. The Lakers like that. But with those two fouls, you can't afford another one. He just picked the third one up. That brings back in Kobe Bryant. This was the place, you may recall, a year ago when Bryant threw four air balls in the fifth and deciding game in that second round series between these two teams. Yeah, and I was talking to Mitch Kupchak before the game, and he said the kid wants to do away with those demons already. And he said the problem, he's trying to tell them you can't do them in game one or two. You have to do them throughout the series. You can't get it all out. And he said in game one, he was so aggressive, he was out of control at times. So this shot, Kupchak, here's the GM under Jerry West. This question's rather West will return after this year. Magic Johnson came out the other day, said it may be a money issue. Stockton on the floor. John Stockton has suddenly gotten hot. He has seven points all in this second quarter. Well, he says their team is struggling offensively, and that's the greatness of John Stockton. He's passing guys the ball. They're missing shots, so he's going to shoot the ball until guys are making shots again. Shaq is pushed out now, and that's a good job by Carr. Shaq will try to maneuver back outside. It goes to Van Exel. And now Shaq with the Jenna fadeaway and a whistle and a foul on Carr. Sometimes working the officials in the papers help, and it's helping right now. Shaquille O'Neal issued a warning. If they're not going to clean it up, I'm going to have to throw some elbows. The elbows are and right up. now, he's getting some good calls. You can see, there's the push. They call the foul. Knocked away by Anderson. Retrieved by Bryant. Shot clock down to 13. O'Neal again outside his comfort zone. Carr is there. And then Carr fell off, and O'Neal travels across the lane. And the reason O'Neal traveled is because Carr fell off. O'Neal was still in the body and didn't feel it anymore, so he traveled. Does center have maybe 
the, the most extrasensory perception type. <laughs> exactly. You're always feeling things that you can't see. They do. That was accidental defense. <laughs> <laughs> 4.45 to play in the second. Lakers on top by five. Rugged play continues. And Malone has to scrape himself off the Delta Center floor. And a foul call. You see, the tempo was starting to slow a bit. You, you agree, Kevin? All yes. of a sudden, you the whistle was blowing, and, you know, guys are going to the foul line, but the play has stopped. And if you're Gary Sloan, that's exactly what you want. Ball is called on Blount. He's got his first. More shoving and pushing inside. This time, Fox and Russell are jousting, and Fox picks up his third. And suddenly, Del Harris has one headache that he didn't expect. A lot of foul trouble from his starting. Well, he told his young players in game one, they beat us up. They were more physical. In game two, I want you to be more physical. The problem with that is you do have young players, and now they're all in foul trouble. The good thing is if you're a coach, Kevin, they listen. Exactly. And Robert Ory, bad wheel and all. He twisted an ankle earlier in the game, back in the game for Los Angeles. And there goes Rick Fox, tagged with three fouls, and we're not even at halftime. So here's Russell again, out of Long Beach State. Another second-round find by this franchise. Four and a half to play in the second quarter. It's a four-point game. So here comes Van Exel. The defense of Stockton fell aside, and Van Exel wide open from 15. Well, the Jazz are getting a bit of their own medicine. The Lakers are really taking advantage of the Utah Jazz with pick and roll plays. Van Exel now, and Van Exel, a great matchup. Malone, overcome, Paul Malone. Four-point game again. Utah has hit six consecutive shots. You know what I don't like about this game, and, and I know you have to call the game close, but Kevin, that is at least the six away from the ball foul that has been called in the last five minutes, and you don't like that. You don't mind them playing Fisco. I think you have to allow them to play a little bit. This is playoff basketball. Fools with that tempo you were talking Yeah, it does. But I think it hurts the Lakers more than it does the Jazz. The Jazz want to play in half court. If you tell Jerry Sloan that you're going to play half court basketball, he'll take it against anybody. Sloan inside finds an easy half to the rack, and he's got five off the bench. He's got about seven rebounds. Again, he has made a dent in this game. He's been the surprise players, player for the Lakers in the playoffs thus far. Cordell. Anderson waits. Malone works on Blount. Back out Stockton. Nice move by Bright, who committed. And that's what John Stockton will do. He'll burn you. Well, Del Harris, Harris said we want him to be more uh, uh, aggressively, offensively. Unfortunately, he's making all the shots. Stockton, four of five in this quarter. Vanessa. Rebound chased by Anderson, knocked out of bounds by Van Exel. Utah's ball, 322 to play. You know, we were asking Jerry Sloan this morning who the Lakers offense reminded him of, and he said, of ourselves. He said they do a lot of pick and rolls just like we do, and they do a lot of cuts with the big men just like we do. The only thing is, LA can create off the dribble in Utah. Yeah. yeah. Anderson inside, three second violation. At least. <laughs> <laughs> David Clavis brings a smile to the face of Jerry Sloan, 56 years old, as unpretentious as any coach in the NBA. He finished second in Coach of the Year balloting to Indiana's Larry Bird. Finally, people noticed him, though. You know, the fact that he finished second is, is almost a miracle. Oh, look out! Ride him, Cowboy! Kobe Bryant! What a play! He's got six, and he did it that time walking the high wire. You mean create his own offense. Wow. Wow. 2.45 in the second quarter. Malone. Blount is there. Shot clock is at eight. Behind the back into Anderson. And a illegal defense. That is the second. Well, you can see on this last place, Kevin, they just cleared the side for Kobe Bryant because they know he can get to the bucket. My. Mm. That is mesmerizing. That is Simply it. mesmerizing. Lakers by six. Technical shot is in. Lakers on top by 5.48. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing RX 300. <laughs>
It's a skate. Bring it to me. We meet like a bride. The amazing four-wheel drive RX 300. Close the gates! Not just another SUV. It's like no other vehicle on Earth. How are you, Truman? Vital signs are good. <laughs> Lights. Cue the sign. Camera. Yeah! Hey, Truman! Sorry, can't stop! Truman. Say something. You're on television. You're live to the whole world. That's amazing. Jim Carrey is Truman Burbank. Wanna do it again? No! In what Esquire magazine calls the movie of the decade. It's the movie! The Truman Show, rated PG, June 5th, everywhere. Kiwi strawberry. Welcome to living delicious. Have a glamalicious time. It's delicious, babe. Less hair. Great strawberry. Step inside. <laughs> Avocado banana. I don't think so. Broccoli honeydew. <clears throat> How come I can't get into living delicious? Because I'm in your way. Oh. <laughs> Mystic. It's all about living delicious. The NBA Playoffs on TNT. Brought to you by Isuzu. Builders of the completely reinvented 1998 Isuzu Rodeo. Isuzu, go farther. And by at and It's all within your reach. They're playing outside, and they're playing inside the Delta Center tonight. Game two Western Conference Final with Reggie Theus and Doc Rivers, Kevin Harlan. It's guard play now, which has taken over the second quarter. Van Exel's got nine, Stockton with ten. Yeah, same thing in game one. The difference is the Laker guards are responding. They're playing good basketball themselves. The technical is on the illegal defense. The second on L.A. Stockton again. Stockton is on fire. He's got 12. He really is, and he's going for it. This is unusual that you see John Stockton go for it this early in a game. This is something he usually waits for the third and fourth quarter to do. Van Exel. Stockton is there. Van Exel says. Launch of three. Rebound by O'Neal. Ostertag is there, a pirouette by Shaq, and a rebound inside, claimed eventually by Malone. And in there, Ori, who got it from Blunt, back to Ori, back to Blunt, in a fresh 24. Here comes Shaq. I don't know that if was it wasn't a pass <laughs> from Robert Ori. Either that, or it was the hardest big shot I've ever seen. Shaq with Ostertag there, with a hook, and it's down. So big, so soft. That touch was just terrific. Nice and soft. Gentle shot. His game, I think even during the playoffs, has expanded to a new level. Yeah, it really has. Minute 30 remaining in this second quarter. Utah has hit eight consecutive. Oh. And it's got <laughs> there. Count it for two. Stockton makes it work with a offensive goaltend called on Bryant. John Stockton right now is giving Nick Van Exel hits. 15 to play in the second quarter. Van Exel to Shaq. Oster tag there. Anderson made double, but again, they just think of Oster tag. Shaq and a foul. He is like a runaway bar. So he, he gets he really moving, is. you cannot stop him. Nor can you stop Malone and Stockton. No, it's usually Stockton to Malone, but lately it's been Malone to Stockton, <laughs> and Stockton is just going for it offensively. You know, he's one of those guards, and I, I think this is what a point guard has to do. He senses his team is struggling a little bit offensively. So right now he has become an offensive player, scoring, shooting, driving to the bucket. 50-47 Los Angeles by three. They've led by nine. They've led most of this first half. Stockton has caught a flame here in the second quarter. See, I think he's always hot. He just picks and chooses when he wants to, get to use it. Well, he's using it now. He is. Adam Keith comes in for the first time with Anderson, Russell, Malone, and Stockton. Utah is shooting 53%. Russell, Ori is there. There's Ori is quick with the bad hip. Shot clock at five. Anderson to keep. Nice fake once, twice, and off and a five. But he made the proper hesitation. Well, the difference in Adam Keefe last year to this year is this year Adam Keefe knows where to get open. He finds the open spots on the floor. 
his minutes are down now. 63% shooting in the playoffs against Houston, San Antonio, and now Los Angeles. And it's because Brian Russell has been uh, blossoming and coming into full flower in this spring playoff. Yeah, exactly. Brian Russell has picked up the play where he left off in last year's playoff. Nike halftime report on deck. Jordan is the MVP. Latrell Sprewell, more news on him. What? Kevin Johnson says oh, by my. the Suns, but not the NBA. Lee Johnson and Kenny the Jet Smith on deck. So KJ is one. not retiring. He's just going somewhere else. Well, he carried a hefty price tag. Bryant. And it was knocked away by Shandon Anderson with 15 seconds to shoot. But the Lakers is trying to get a quick shot up to get into the two-for-one situation. They got 33 seconds with which to work. And the next one's done. They've been doing the entire second quarter. The guards have controlled it. And actually again, in the Kobe Bryant, acrobatic oh. move and it won't go. Rebound by Malone. Trying for the final shot with a chance to take a lead to halftime. Yeah, I think the Lakers would love to go into halftime with this lead. Psychologically, it would be really big for the Lakers. Stop it. In the Malone, Clark makes the steal, but did his momentum carry him out of play? And a foul called on Blount. Three seconds left. Malone will be at the line, and Blount has picked up his third personal. Well, they don't mind using Blount, and if he sacrifices fouls, I don't think Gail Harris minds that. You have to go after Carl Malone, and I tell you, I don't see the foul right there. Thirty-four-year-old Carl Malone. You know that was. You remember Reggie Page was talking about the, the breath. If you breathe on him, you get the foul. I think right now Robert Ory and Corey Blunt is thinking that's true, Reggie. Very true. So this is the first, and looking for the tie on this. 3.3 seconds to play in the first half. Carl Malone's got the line tonight a couple times. Five of nine with this tenth free throw and waiting. He's been a hot and cold free throw shooter in the second half of this season. Ah! Lakers lead. Blount has it. Ben Exel. Desperation shot. No good if it goes. But the Lakers, who led by nine, watched that lead get chipped at by John Stockton. He was an assassin. He went six of seven, 14 points, second quarter. He was the difference. We're at the half. Dramatically different game than game one. Lakers on top by one. Most people tell you, oh, Rolling Rock's got the long neck so your hand doesn't get the beer all warm when you're holding it. The truth is, it's a survival of the fittest thing, uh, natural selection. Think about it. Hot day, beer's in a cooler, ice is melting, water level rising. You got a longer neck, you don't drown. Basic evolution. I'm thinking of like writing a pamphlet. One day, science will create a pill for men's hair loss. That day is today. Introducing Propecia, the first pill for men with certain types of hair loss. In clinical studies, the vast majority of men, 83%, maintained their hair count, and most, 66%, regrew some hair. You may need to take it daily for three months or more to see results. Propecia is for men only. A small number of men experience certain sexual side effects. Each occurred in less than 2% of men. Women who are or may potentially be pregnant must not use it or handle broken tablets because of the risk of a specific kind of birth defect. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist and read the consumer information they can provide. It may look like just another pill, but for men who want to treat hair loss, it's a beautiful thing to behold. Propecia, helping make hair loss history. Have you seen the Elf? The Elf does its magic with advanced photo system film. Presto, it's loaded. Now take super shots in three different sizes. Have you seen all the Elves? From Canon. Please move away from the car. Please move away from the car. Please approach the car. What kind of pants are those? Slates. Do they make seat covers? Slates Pants by Levi Strauss and Company. Time to get dressed. 
Well, they played 24 minutes here at the Delta Center. You know, at this time in game one at halftime, it was a 26-point Utah lead, but with ankle breakers like that from Kobe Bryant, it's the Lakers with a one-point lead at the break, 50-49. to We're coming to you live from the Delta Center with the Nike Halftime Report. I'm Ernie Johnson, along with Kenny the Jet Smith. <laughs> Best seats in the house for this game, two of the Western Conference Finals. I know where you love this time of year. The place is electric, Kenny. Oh, it's just great. I, I like the smell of the popcorn, everything about it. I like the fans. This is a great atmosphere to play. The best fans in the business right here in Utah. It's a one-point game. The Lakers on top, 50-49. to 49. We started the night talking about Kenny's keys to this game. Let's revisit those now in terms of the Lakers first. Yeah, with the Lakers, it's really important for them to do certain things to be successful. Cut down their force errors and keep the starting jet five for the Jazz on the floor. Make Stockton Malone play a lot of minutes to let them get tired down the stretch. And I think that was a big key in the first half that they were able to do that. Shaq early was great. I think early in the game, in game one, he's getting the ball out here, throwing it out the double team, not scoring. Not tonight. He's scoring inside. Kobe Bryant comes off the bench. Him and Nick Van Exel did a great job of coming in, giving the Lakers a big boost instead of instead of uh, Utah. Shaquille O'Neal has 19 points in the first half. That's what he totaled for game one. Meantime, on the Utah side of the ball, break it down for me. Yeah, Utah was a little surprised. In game one, they had a lot of hustle plays, and that was probably the key for them getting that big lead. And then they also put Shaq in the pick and roll, which they kind of abandoned this game, which really I, I was surprised at. They really did a great job of doing it in game one, but in game two, not as many. They had a couple of hustle plays here. Stockton, the thief of the year, always gets a great pass over to Brian Russell. He gets the layup. That was the only hustle play, and the pick and roll they only ran one time. Got Shaquille a foul. They kind of abandoned it. What do you look for here in the second 24 minutes, Ken? Well, if I'm Utah, I got to go to the pick and roll. I got to get Shaq moving away from the basket where he's dangerous. And if I'm the Lakers, I'm keep pounding it to the big fella. He's scoring every single time down there. The Lakers have led by as many as nine in this game. The halftime lead is one. Back with more on the Nike halftime report in just a second, including Michael Jordan. Guess who was the MVP again? We'll be back. Michael Jordan is CEO Jordan. Hello, MJ. We got a big idea. Hmm. Meet me in my study. Nice time. Okay, let's hear it. Single mesh. Single mesh. Single mesh. Here's an idea. I'm sending you to business school. School? Which one? Bryman. Bryman? Yes, Bryman, where you get the training you need to enter the fast-paced worlds of business or medical assistance. In a shocker, the Bryman College of Business and Medical Assistance upsets Kansas 102-81. Out of nowhere, the improbable fighting slide rules have become a force to be reckoned with. The victories over Kentucky, Arizona, and arch-rival DeBron. Better keep up the grades. A crowd of two-wheeled enthusiasts gathers at the Honda factory in Marysville, Ohio. Today, we are proud to introduce to you the Honda Shadow Aero. The bike's a real hit with the crowd. The Aero sports the latest in streamlined design with an exhaust pipe right out of the pages of science fiction. Here's Miss Aero showing off the bike's dazzling colors. The Honda Aero is available today, and what the verdict in Marysville? There you have it, and it's full speed ahead for the bike of tomorrow. Matt, got your email. Vancouver? Genius. Pass it on to Epps. He's running it through the Northwest. Hey, Matt. Ideas are hitting the Northwest. I've got purchasing checking suppliers. Uh-uh. We want it up top. Client briefing. Your Vancouver idea. Want to take your business to the next level? And we welcome you back to the Nike Halftime Report from the Delta Center in Salt Lake City. Tomorrow night, Pacers and Bulls, Game 2 of the Eastern Conference Finals. Chicago took Game 1 behind 31 from Michael Jordan. By the way, did I mention that Michael's the MVP? Let's hear from him. I never go into the season trying to win MVP. I go into the season trying to make sure you guys don't have any loopholes or any criticism about my basketball skills. And at the end of the season, if it equates to... Uh, 
individual accolade, then, you know, I'm happy for that. But as you know, the ultimate goal for me right now is to win the sixth championship. And uh, I think we, we're in, in the middle of that, and I think we will accomplish that. And, you know, with this accolade, uh, it will, will not be cherished until we accomplish the sixth championship. Well, if you're scoring at home, that makes five. Count them, five MVPs for Michael Jordan. You see the first place votes, 92 to 20 for Carl Malone, who was second in the balloting, followed by Gary Payton, Shaquille O'Neal, and Tim Duncan. Kenny, any criticisms you have for Michael's game? He seems concerned hey, over that. Hey, Michael, you know, Ernie's always criticizing you. know we went to North Carolina together. He's always on you all the time, so I just wanted you to know that. Thank you very much. Also, Shaquille O'Neal, the all-time record with six MVPs. Michael now has five. Another bit of news tonight. Let's talk about Latrell Sprewell and what the situation is there. The NBA has been told that Sprewell is planning to file a lawsuit claiming that his civil rights were violated by the arbitrator's ruling in March. Now, the uh, Jeffrey Mishkin, who's the NBA's chief legal counsel, says those claims would be absurd. The Players Association said it would not condone a lawsuit by Latrell Sprewell and an attorney for Sprewell says it hasn't been completely decided yet whether or not he will file a lawsuit, but that is the talk right now. What's your take on that, Kenny? Well, if I'm Latrell Spiro, I, I sometimes you got to know when to fold them. I think I would just fold the 10 on this. Go ahead and play basketball. You reinstate it. If I had planned on playing 12 years, I'd play another year to get that extra $6.4 million and not make anyone else mad. Let's talk about another story coming out of Phoenix tonight. Kevin Johnson, we have learned, is uh, the Suns are going to renounce the rights to his contract. 11 years, 11 great years in Phoenix. Your thoughts on going up against him, and if you think this is the end of the line for KJ now. Well, I don't think it's the end of the line, but it just shows how the collective bargain agreement is kind of tricky. Well, here's a great player. The franchise, I know they want but they just can't afford to pay him at that price at this stage of his career, and they have to let him go. I think it's a sad state and a sad statement for the collective bargaining agreement. You know, they had to uh, talk him out of retirement last year, paid him one year, $8.4 million, and now they renounce their rights to Kevin Johnson in Phoenix. Back to wrap things up on the Nike Halftime Report from the Delta Center, where it's a one-point game at the break. Fans a bit subdued at the break. 50 to 49. Hey, look at me. I'm on TV. <laughs> The Elf does its magic with advanced photo system film. Presto, it's loaded. Now take super shots in three different sizes. Have you seen all the Elves? From Canon. In our quest for the finest brakes in the world, we tested our pads against other leading brands. With pad after pad. In test after test. The results were always the same. No other brand stopped shorter than Performance Friction Carbon Metallic. The ones we stock at AutoZone. This here freight train, Pete Pablo, me, I'm Motif. There's only one drink fat enough to quench our thirst, and that's Turbo Sweet 7. God, genius, the can's upside down. Don't talk to me like a child. I played Hamlet at Cambridge. Once again, you've ruined my concentration. Excuse me, excuse me, what's, what's my motivation? When you're thirsty, trust your gut, not some actor. That's it, I am going to my trailer. For everyone who'd rather do it themselves, we make the new generation of Wagner Power Painters with power, control, and versatility like never before. If it needs painting, staining, or sealing, the choice is easy. Get a Wagner and get it done. Ladies and gentlemen, we are flying in the Bermuda Triangle, a place where things are known to disappear and are never found. Now, fortunately, we have an I Omega Zip Drive on board, and with it, I can make a quick copy of all my important stuff. The 100 megabyte zip disk let me save, store, and take all my stuff with me. No need to panic. Okay, boys, let's take her back in. Hello? Get an iOmega zip drive today, because it's your stuff. Hey, I had a turnover in the last segment. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, six MVPs. It's the Lakers. Shaquille, you know, I was, I was so confused. They'll clear everything up on Inside the NBA tonight. Vince Cellini has uh, Cheryl Miller and B.J. Armstrong joining them for Inside the NBA tonight. Friday night, it's game three of this series. The Jazz and the Lakers change a venue to the Great Western Forum. We'll be there 10 o'clock for the pregame show at 9.30. When's the NBA draft coming up, you ask? Got a little bit. But June 24th, 
from the garage in Vancouver. 1998 NBA draft, the Clippers have the first pick. Goodwill Games in New York, coming up July 19th, where the world's best will prove it. Guys like Alan Johnson in the hurdles. It's the Goodwill Games from New York, where the best get together the 19th through August 2nd. Here on TNT, Carl Malone and the Jazz leading one game to none, down by a point at the break. It's 50 to 49, third quarter coming up. better place for business the network place sharp can take you there people are connected knowledge is shared and sharps advanced digital document systems the imager series speed the flow of ideas through the network creating impressive documents and raising productivity to its peak the network place sharp can take you there in the soul of every Bridgestone Potenza lie the twists and turns of the legendary Formula One Grand Prix courses of the world. Using a tapered tread element derived from the Potenza F1 racing rain tire, the Potenza RE 910 street tire handles the road wet or dry. Bridgestone Potenza with Unity. Technology-driven performance with the soul of Formula One. Get a limited edition Formula One watch free with the purchase of four selected Bridgestone tires. Welcome to the award-winning Moly Toyota, home of the number one selling car, the Toyota Camry. Drive away in a fully equipped Camry LE for $159 a month or take advantage of 1.4% financing or lease a new 4Runner for $249 a month. Moly Toyota is recognized as one of the top 60 Toyota dealers, offering you excellence in sales, service, parts, and customer satisfaction. So thank you, Kansas City, and come home to Moly Toyota, where our customers love what we do for them every day. When Dan's ready for something new, he knows right where to turn. Cable Dahmer Chevrolet in Independence. Hi, neighbor. Dan knows he'll get a higher trade-in allowance, on-the-spot financing, and eight and a half acres of cars, trucks, and vans. Dan knows he'll be treated like a neighbor. And Dan should know this is his fourth Cable Dahmer Chevrolet. Find out for yourself what Dan knows. Come see us today. Hi, neighbor. At Cable Dahmer Chevrolet on the Miracle Mile, Nolan Road, Independence. This program is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the National Basketball Association. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the National Basketball Association is prohibited. Dusk on the Wasatch Range. The NBA playoffs on TNT were in Salt Lake City. Game 2 Western Conference Final. And you knew it had to be different, and it has been. Even the Jazz knew it would be different. Here's their backup point guard, Howard Isley. I just, I don't know the Lakers. I don't know what happened to them in game one. They just didn't seem like they was there. We're not expecting to see that, that team or the same team tonight. So we just got to get ourselves ready to go. I think they're going to be a lot more aggressive on both ends of the floor. I think it's going to be a more physical game. It's going to be a good game as well. And Kevin, you can see right away, the Lakers decided we're going to put bodies on the Jazz players, and they did that. The, the, the problem with that is they're all in battle trouble right now, but I think Dale Harris will take it. Going into halftime with the lead, he's happy about that. They're doing everything he wanted them to do. They've been aggressive offensively, and they're not allowing the Jazz to just make cuts whenever they want to. The physicality of the game, though, is a, is a big departure from game one. Well, and also you look at the turnovers. The Jazz have 12 turnovers in the first half. That is not a characteristic of Utah Jazz basketball, and I think due to physical play from the Lakers, that is why. And the tempo, of course, is affected by all that. Yeah, I, I think the tempo has gone up and down. When it favors the Lakers, obviously, you're running up and down the court. When it's half court, you like the Jazz chances. Jerry Sloan wants to slow this game down a little bit. He's Doc Rivers. I'm Kevin Harlan. Let's send it to the third member of our crew, Reggie Theus. All right, guys, talking to Dell Harris. He said he liked the way the guys played in the first half. The one thing that they have to do is keep establishing their offense. They played a little bit too much uh, power ball at the end of the game, got away from what they did best. And also, they need to keep mixing up their defense on the pressure of Stockton. He got off. Now, Jerry Sloan said, hey, the way we finish this game is how we should win this game. If you guys concentrate, we're walking out of here 2-0. Guys? 
All right, Reg, Laker defense has been a big story. Well, it reminds me of game two, the Seattle Supersonic Series. They struggled in game one. They came back, turned it around. They're playing great defense tonight. Big difference. You look at the possessions in the first half in game one, 26-52 in game two. Big difference for the Lakers. Dale Harris has to be happy. Foul trouble for Los Angeles and some of Harris's starters. That's got away on their mind. O'Neal's not in foul trouble, but Ori and Jones and Fox all with the lot. All role players. You know, not Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones, they really need his points, but it's not like he's playing poorly. It's that he's in foul trouble, not allowed to play. We begin the second half from the Delta Center. Foster on top with Russell Malone, Hornacek, and Stockton, who was great in the second quarter. Stockton, nice spin move by Russell. Stockton can't hit the reverse. Rebound by O'Neal, and here comes Derek Fisher, who was very quiet after the first quarter. Well, he was quiet mainly because Van Axel played the run of the minutes, and, and that's how basically they've been going. Jones with the floater and tagged by Hornacek, who picks up the foul. That's number one on Jeff Hornacek. See, that's, that's no coincidence. You come out of halftime and your first play is to Eddie Jones. That's great coaching from Dale Harris. He understands this is our second go-to guy after Shaq, and our go-to guy has been in foul trouble, a little frustrated. Instead of having him force it, let's give him a call early. I think that's really smart basketball. So here's Eddie Jones, who was great in the middle portion of the Seattle series with an unbelievable string of 23, 29, and 32 points. He changed the series for a Yeah, it's amazing what a call from Mama will do. Yeah, his mom wrote him and said, you got to change your, your whole attitude from the Portland series where he was absolutely wrong. And he blossomed in that second series with the Sonics. Malone over Shaquille O'Neal. Carl Malone rings the bell right off the top. gone six of seven from the floor Fisher and Stockton Jones and Hornacek Russell is guarding Fox shot clock down to seven Shaq doubled out to Jones by Hornacek and up for two Stockton is there again yeah but adjustment and now you can see on that set the Jazz went to trap Shaq on the catch first adjustment that Jerry Sloan has had to make wonderful screen set by Malone which offered Hornacek a wide open shot L.A. the other way. You know, it's funny. We talked to Jerry Sloan before the game, and we asked him any adjustments. He said, no, we won the game. I'm going to wait to see what they do, and then we'll adjust. Shot inside. Up and over. Great Foster. You could see John Stockton was going to trap, and he looked at where Shaq had the ball and said, there's no use. He's going to score. <laughs> Shaq with 21. Lakers on top by three after leading by nine in the first ten. Clock of 10, Fisher forces out Stockton, who regains his balance. Into Shaq. Shaq goes back, and Stockton coming inside. Rebound by Orange. Well, Shaq Stockton was trying to pick up a foul on Shaq. Fisher takes it in. Malone was there. Foul called on Hornacek. You can see at halftime the other message to Derek Fisher. Do not leave John Stockton. He doesn't care about Carl Malone right now. He's looking for John Stockton. And once again, Derek Fisher. I don't, I, you know, I thought that was a flop at first. It looked like I don't know after watching it. It looked like he got pushed a little bit. Fisher hits his first point since the first quarter. He had seven then. Now he's got eight total in the game. Three assists. Starts and loses defense as his calling card. A second-year goal and an open shot to the uh, You know, we, we talk about the Lakers and Derek Fisher and how many athletes they have. You know what makes them so interesting? That they can play both styles of basketball. Obviously, they want to run. But when you have Shaq on your team, you can play a half-court offense. Foster from outside this many the off. And Utah climbs to within three again. Well, Carl Malone has made a jump shot. And Foster have made jump shots twice. Big guys not coming out contesting shots. Both teams shooting about 50%. Jones will dance on Hornacek. Shot clock at eight. The fadeaway. Sweet stroke by Jones. Yeah, I think both guards, uh, Eddie Jones and Kobe Bryant, can score whenever they want to. I think that's a tough matchup for Jeff Hornacek. Jones is only one of four. Russell, Foster again, hit from outside before. He's hit two in a row from outside. Well, he knows what he can do. You don't see Greg Foster trying to catch post passes and throw hook shots. 
Rodgers played with Minnesota, Chicago, Washington, and now Utah. Jones, O'Neal, Foster is there. Shot clock at three, Shaq inside, Foster goes down, there's a whistle and a foul. And it's on Foster, has some words following that to O'Neal. Yeah, I mean, this is just tough. You know what Shaq has decided? I outweigh this guy by almost 100 pounds. There is nothing he can do. And now in game one, he kind of bailed Foster out. He didn't go that quick, didn't go that strong. He's doing it tonight. I think that's smart. I think Shaq, Shaq made the best statement of the year early in the season. They were talking to him about adding things to his game. And he said, you know, I tried that last year, all that finesse stuff. Until somebody stops my power game, I'm going power. And why not? No one can stop it. Exactly. Seattle certainly couldn't. Sabonis and Portland couldn't. Down here in game two, Utah can't. Well, no one can. And it's a three-point Laker lead with eight and a half to play in the third. Hornacek lost the ball. Jones was there. The pass was a little astray. And Sloan watches his five turn it over again. 13 turnovers. Their playoff average is 12 and a half. Well, it's amazing when pressure is put on teams, how they turn the ball over. No pressure put on them in game one. They did turn it over. Pressure from three. Rebound retrieved by Stockton. They're on the move now. Here comes Utah. Stockton leads into Fisher, and there's a charge on Stockton. Good call. Great anticipation from Derek Fisher. You watch here, he just guessed right. He was moving, but you can see the arm of John Stockton clearing out. Watch the arm. And that's why the foul was called. Bill Oaks made the call. Three-point Laker lead. Stockton with two fouls. Approaching eight minutes to play here in the third. And there's a charge on Fisher who says touche. The king of love. <laughs> he, he is the best. You know, John Stockton and I have actually had arguments over who's a better flopper. I think, case in point, it's Stockton. Dell Harris, I think, is going to get teed. Well, it's only Terry Durham was all set to nail him. And Jerry Sloan oh, said, go ahead, do it. Do well, it. What he's saying is you're going to give the guy hey. attack. Instead, you whispered in his ear. What do you call the guy? Now, he wants Terry Durham to whisper in his ear. Tell me the same thing you told Dell Harris. <laughs> Need to play in the third. Lakers by three. Malone pops it up, picked up by Fisher. Boy, there's a lot of sloppy plays from the Jazz right there. Only oh, Malone yeah. was never looking. The pass was bad by Fisher out of bounds at sails. And a Laker turnover. And Carl Malone was never looking for the pass, so I guess you shouldn't throw the pass. Utah has turned it over on their last three consecutive trips. Along with Ori doing the swim. Russell is stopping, shot clock showing eight. Into Foster. Fisher was on the perimeter and guarded. And a foul is called. And it's on Shaq, who is down low. Yeah, nice move by Greg Foster. He slipped the screen, and he was going to try to get himself an easy dunk. Shaq knew he was beat. He just grabbed him. <laughs> you feel that when he grabs you. Oh, you feel it. <laughs> Stockton over Fisher. Stockton cannot be stopped. He's got 16 points all since the beginning of the second quarter. Well, it used to be the pick and roll. Tonight, it's the pick and go anywhere else. Do I shoot the ball? And he is right on the money. Ori, look up for Shaq! I love the adjustment. Every time the Lakers have been in trouble, they throw it up to the basket and say, Shaq will get it first. Get it up. The key is the pass. 23 for O'Neal. Lakers by three again. One to seven. Malone, Ori is on Malone. Foster will drive. Shaq closes the door. Shot clock at six for Carl Malone. Rebound, Fisher. But what Ori gives up in power, he gains in quickness. Fisher into Stockton. Fisher to the rack in a charge. John Fisher again. Now you can't play the flop game with John Stockton. He will get his body in the right position and give it up. And tonight, he's become a scorer. Shaquille O'Neal puts an explanation point on this one with 23. It's a new Lakers team. They lead by three in the third.
You know, one way underage drinkers can get beer is if someone who's over 21 buys it for them. If you have friends who are underage and they ask you to buy them a beer, do us all a favor and don't. 21 means 21. Couldn't have said it better myself. Mm -hmm. I did a great deal of research on the automobile. I looked at the Honda Civic, Ford Probe. I always came back to Hyundai. Right now, an Elantra is just $9,999, plus factory options like air conditioning, alloy wheels, and moonroof for just half price. I love the design of the Elantra. It's sleek, classy, car of the 90s. I got everything I wanted with this car. It impressed me completely. Take a test drive and experience it yourself. Jump shot tonight. Speaking of your sister, ain't those my shoes? Oh, oh. You got like ballet practice after this or something? Oh, you snapping on my shoes? Look at your sneakers. They so old, they say Air Moses on them. Oh. Well, if I was in your shoes, I'd walk on my hands. Oh. I thought your mom's got your baby shoes bronze, son. Oh. What? Shouldn't you take your shoes off before you clip your toenails? Oh. Oh. No, no, I ain't gonna front. Money sneakers is fat, P H A T. Probably hurting all your toes. Oh. Oh. Wait up. <laughs> NBA Playoffs on TNT, brought to you by Dutch Boy Paints. Give your home the lasting look of Dutch Boy. By cold, refreshing Zima. Zima, a few degrees cooler. And by Hyundai, where driving is believing. Sunday, May 31st, don't miss a TNT original unlike any you've ever seen. Thicker Than Blood is a movie that deals with tough issues. The teacher fights for his students and wonders if they'll see 18 years of age. It premieres in less than two weeks only on TNT, the best movie studio on television. Six and a half to play here in the third. Lakers by three. Malone picked up by Fox. Shot clock at Russell. seven. Russell from three. Rebound by Eddie Jones. Here comes Los Angeles. LA has turned it over three of their last four trips down. Coaching six in the third. Fisher. Rebound by Foster. Well, you know, in the second half thus far, neither team has really gotten a flow or gotten into their offense. Both teams have come out and played much better defense. It's Malone and Stockton with the shot clock showing 10. Stockton wiggles inside. Russell on athletic catch. Stockton. Hornacek for the top. Rebound Hornacek. Inside the corner. Boy, I tell you, Jeff, Jeff Hornacek paid for that pass. He was steamrolled by Shaquille O'Neal. And then he got O'Neal's foot, size 21, right in the chops. Yeah. Lots of leather. <laughs> Six to shoot. Screen by Ori. Jones is free and buries it. Big shot. They need him to get off offensively. And, you know, I think what he's doing right now is miraculous because when you sit that much in the first half, really have no rhythm, it's tough to get going. On his uh, rebound, gobbled up by Ori. Lakers on top by three under five to play in the third. L.A., 48% for the floor. Jones, the move. Look at him, detonate and take it inside. Oh, oh my. Shot. Eddie Jones pulls off the impossible. What a play. Boy, he penetrated himself into trouble and was creative enough to make the shot. Or athletic enough. Jones has eight all in this third quarter. <laughs> Here's the foul called on Fisher. I mean, what's the first step? Bam, gone. Too late. I mean, in one step, he was open, but then he had to create. <laughs> that was pretty. Well, Derek Fisher just wasted a foul. I mean, he just walked up to Greg Foster and threw him an elbow. He was upset because Greg Foster got a clean pick on him. Fisher is gone with four fouls. Van Exel is in. Ori limping off the floor. Blount has taken his place. So Blount, Bryant, Van Exel, Jones, and O'Neal. And a foul on Nick Van Exel. Cut off the block, and he's 
been hit with his second foul as we send it over to Reggie Theus. All right, Kevin, Robert Orr is showing a lot of heart in this third quarter because he played a lot of minutes, but at halftime, that hip that he hurt in the second quarter really stiffened up, and you could see him dragging his leg on the floor, but as Doc said, finding a way to contribute, showing a lot of heart for the Lakers right now. Yeah, he's been on championship teams, so I think he knows what it's all about. Yeah, played for two down in Houston. Isley the miss, not the same Isley we saw in game one. Blount with his 10th rebound. That's a career playoff high. Van Exel tries to create. Oh. Finds Blount inside, and he sails in and is fouled underneath. Well, he did create. <laughs> he came off the pick and roll. And I'll tell you right now, uh, if you went into this game, and someone told you that both teams would run a lot of pick and rolls and the Lakers would run them better, they would think you were crazy. But right now, the Lakers are getting points off the pick and roll. Olasek with his third foul. Here's former Chicago Bull, Corey Plum. You know, there was some talk earlier in the season, early March, that perhaps Del Harris might be gone. There was perhaps some team unrest. They had a meeting. Jerry West sent a letter. They then rattled off a 22 and 3 run. And here they are in the playoffs in the Western Conference Finals. Well, winning is like a deodorant. It covers up a lot of things that stink, Kevin, <laughs> and that's what's going on. Six-nothing run by Los Angeles, now leading by seven. Malone works on Blount. Shot clock showing six. Boston, again from outside, he's at two long-distance third-quarter shots. Jones the rebound, Van Exel to Plant, who is whacked up high by Foster defending, who picks up the foul. That's his fourth foul of the game. The game is becoming helter-skelter-like, and if you're a Laker fan, you like that. The Lakers are doing a great job defensively, really taking Utah out of their offense, and when they do that, long rebounds and break. You get the Lakers out on the break with those athletes, good things will happen. Here's Bryant, who flourished in the first half of the season, started in the All-Star game as a 19-year-old as Foster rests with four fouls and six points in a starting role tonight. But then he fell way down the slide in the second half of the season. Well, I think he started thinking he had to be Michael Jordan right away. And, 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 you know, every time he touched the ball, he tried to make something happen. He did that in his rookie year. He got away from that in the first half before the All-Star break, and he fell back in that bad pattern. Isley looking for Malone. He'll work one-on-one -on -one with Blount. Fire man. Nice shot by Carl Malone. And Utah within six. You know, if you're Dale Harris, you're thinking, Blunt had his hand up. He forced him into a tough shot, and he made the shot. Good defense. Along with 21. Screen by Shaq for Jones. He's had a great third quarter. The foul. Loose ball foul called on Corey Blount. There's only so much you can do guarding Carl Malone. He denies him, pushes them out away from the basket. Malone does a great ball swing, gives himself some space, and makes a shot. But that's fine defense. And he's got 21. He had 29 in game one. You must crowd Carl Malone. You cannot allow him to get that ball swing off and then get the shot off. Hold a sec. Jones is there. Malone's got the pass. Blount is defending. Shot clock at 10. Russell into Bryant. And right to the rack. Rebound by Eldon Campbell. And Exel. Kobe Bryant inside. Fox who can't get it to go. Rebound by Malone. One is the other way. Lakers back on defense already. And a foul called on Blount. Lakers is doing a nice job transition transition defense. Jazz the know for the long pass, getting quick shots. They've had zero tonight. Two and a half to play in the third. Lakers on top, 67 to 61. For sports news and scores around the clock, ask for CNN Sports Illustrated. I did a great deal of research on the automobile. I looked at the Honda Civic, Ford Probe. I always came back to Hyundai. Right now an Elantra is just $9,999, plus factory options like air conditioning, alloy wheels, and moonroof for just half price. I love the design of the Elantra. It's sleek, classy, car of the 90s. I got everything I wanted with this car. It impressed me completely. Take a test drive and experience it yourself. How many miles do you drive a day? Whoa, you need a car you can count on. You need a Toyota Corolla. 
During the Count on Toyota sales event, you can save on a new Corolla with special low financing. Buy a Corolla now, and you can count on financing as low as 1.4% for up to 24 months. It makes the best-selling car in history even more affordable. 1.4% financing ends June 1st, so hurry. The Count on Toyota sales event is on now. Winning the Super Bowl took some advice, harmony, teamwork, like the team at Olesa Lincoln Mercury. They're number one in some advice and savings, like these Hall of Fame deals. Mountaineers, now up to $5,000 off. And Villagers, now with savings up to $7,000. Take it from me, Jan Stenerud. The people's choice is Olesa Lincoln Mercury, just east of I-35 on Santa Fe, next to Olesa Ford. Now, when you play defense, Doc Rivers, usually you advance, and here is what Utah Jazz has done their last three playoff games. Yeah, they've been great defensively. I think so many people get caught up in talking about the Utah Jazz and their great offense and pick and roll, and they forget that this is a hard-nosed basketball team that plays great defense, and that's why they win games. But look at tonight, Kevin. Different story. Different story. And, and you know the difference is the Lakers were never concerned about their offense. You know, you talked to... A, to every single guy said our offense will be fine tonight if we play defense we will win the basketball game the Lakers are scoring and playing defense Jerry Sloan knows a thing or two about defense doesn't he oh yeah he does <laughs> played 10 years for the Chicago Bulls Jersey was retired you know the Jazz are expression of, of Jerry Sloan exactly. they play exactly the way he played well they're not that physical Sloan, who uh, get pretty physical on a tractor, he, he farms about a thousand acres in Middle Illinois. He's a farmer at heart, and that's where he goes to every offseason. Loves the Salt Lake area, but he goes back to Illinois in the Midwest his roots. Yeah, he said he wanted to get away from the big city life of Utah. <laughs> it's driving. Yeah. 67 63, Lakers by four. Led most of the game by as many as nine, by as few as one earlier. In this quarter, Bryant playing pinball with the bodies defensively of Utah. He has such a great first step. I mean, you can, you can have three guys on their team. Nick Van Exel has it, Eddie Jones has it, and Corey Bryant. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is unbelievable. And he's 19. He's 19 years old. He's still growing. <laughs> growing in a lot of ways. You know, I think the mental growth for him is the key. And do you like the progress you're seeing as you take a look at what players, bench players like Brian have done tonight? Well, you know, the progress tonight has been remarkable going from the progress from game one. Six-point game, 69-63, L.A. approaching two minutes to play here in the third. Isley, Hornacek, Ostertag, Malone, and Russell. Utah five. Two to play. Hornacek. And Malone picked up by Blount and a foul again on Los Angeles. Corey Blount. What do they call him that excellent? You know, we talked to Jerry Sloan this morning and we asked him about Jeff Hornacek and about his injury and, and he said he's fine. I mean, that's Jerry Sloan's answer about everything when you ask him about a guy who was injured. But I'm telling you, Jeff Hornacek is not moving well. He is faster than what he's playing. He's not a great defensive player, but he usually does a pretty good job of staying in front of guys, and he usually is more involved offensively. And you can watch him. I think he's dragging his legs on. Van Axel picks up the foul. Hornacek is 35. Malone, as you see, the hobbling Jeff Hornacek. But he's walked like that all season. He walked back uh, in, in November. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that, maybe that's 35-year-old <laughs> legs. But I, I really do. I think something is bothering him, but you'll never get it from him. I can guarantee you that. You know, like Carl Malone said, if I'm out on the floor, then I'm helping. This is game two of the Western Conference Finals. Los Angeles losing by 35 in game one, leading by four. Van Exel right down the lane. Rebound by Russell. Off to Isley. Lakers back on defense well. Russell the fake on Bryant. Over to Hornacek. Little fake on Jones. And right at the rough shot inside. Fun. Bryant picked it up. You can be as slow as you want to be. When you have a great jump shot, pump fake, you'll get open. Now, you can see Greg Ostrak. He's really been involved. He's had a nice game. Now, when you look at the stat sheet tomorrow, it won't really show it. But he's been involved. He's been active. And that's all Jerry Sloan wants him to do is be active, alter shots. 
Lomasek tonight has six. They had one point and four turnovers in game one. And they won. And they won. Exactly. Pick. Stockton and Malone have ruled the Jazz game tonight. Everybody else has kind of been watching. Well, I think Stockton understands. Jeff Honasek is not scoring points right now. We need one more score, and I have to be it. It's a two-point game. Late third quarter. Bryant guarded by Russell. Into Campbell, back to Kobe, and a charge called in Los Angeles. You can see that play developing the whole way. That was a turnover waiting to happen, and it happened. There was absolutely no spacing on that play. Eldon Campbell picks up his first foul. It was held to Skelton, and it was favoring the Lakers. Now, all of a sudden, the game has gone to a snail's pace. Just like that pace. Nicely, Malone on the front. Rebound by Jones. The Lakers would love to run. 60 seconds left in the third. One thing the Lakers are doing, those jump shots that Carl Malone are taking are about a step further out than the shots he was taking in the first half and in game one. Now, next one is Kim with Ostertag there. Into Jones. Simon <laughs> tried by Campbell on goal. Here comes Isley. Hornacek lost it, got it, up and down. That was close because he was going to make the pass first. Utah has come back to tie at 69. Jones fouled by Russell. Well, I think he can do that all day. Kobe Bryant, Eddie Jones, Nick Van Exel can force fouls. I mean, look at this play. Jeff Hornacek was going to pass this. He saw he didn't have it, had the consciousness to bring it down, put it on the floor, and score. Most players, once they commit, they commit and turn the ball over. Away back on top. Utah has not led since 11-9 back in the first quarter to Reggie Peets. Hey, Jerry Sloan was talking about to his team, hey, listen, we want to run if we have a layup, just like that last play. If we don't, we got to run clock. We got to bring it out and get this game back into our tempo. And, Doc, that's what's happening in this quarter. Yeah, you can see it. it, it first, Lakers are running now. Everybody's playing half court. Lakers playing half court without Shaq is not a good thing. One set got it inside the Malone. It was fouled by Corey Blount. That's number five on Blount. But that really will not concern Dale Harris a whole bunch. He might keep him just eat, might keep him in. You know, if he fouls out, you still have Shaq sitting over there. You have Robert Ory, though he's a little banged up. Malone once again at the free throw line, and O'Neal has been on that bench. A good part of this third quarter is Rick Fox will re-enter the game. Yeah, but they're still up by two. Here's more. You know, they talk about hack a shack. <laughs> They're going to karate Carl pretty soon. <laughs> because he is not making free throws. The jit jitsu uh, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wasn't clever enough to figure out anything that rhymes with Carl or Malone, so. <laughs> you did a good job. I liked it. It was good. <laughs> Lakers by two. Send in suggestions, please. Yeah, we need it. <laughs> It's quiet in this place when one of their guys up there shooting free throws. They can be as loud as any building in the NBA before they can turn it off just like that. I've always thought as a, as a home player, that bothers me more. I want the noise. When it's quiet, that means it's a big shot. Van Exel trying to get a big shot. And it would have been good had it gone, and he gave it a try, but the defense was there for Utah. But with three fouls, Eddie Jones blossoms in the third quarter. 10 points, three rebounds. He led the way and resuscitates Los Angeles. Up by one, we go to the fourth in game two of the Western Conference Final. I did a great deal of research on the automobile. I looked at the Honda Civic, Ford Probe. I always came back to Hyundai. Right now in Elantra is just $9,999. Plus factory options like air conditioning, alloy wheels, and moonroof for just half price. I love the design of the Elantra. It's sleek, classy, car of the 90s. I got everything I wanted with this car. It impressed me completely. Take a test drive and experience it yourself. Yeah. 
welcome back. This is an impossible situation for the Spurs. Absolutely no time left on the clock. Wait a minute. What's going on? Is that Phil Mickelson? Yeah, it makes perfect sense to me, Tom. He's the king of the lob wedge. This is his shot. But it's a very tight line, even for Phil. It's up. A uh, full court pass. Looks like an out to Robinson. What a perfect time! Boy, these guys are good. Prepare for low prices. Magic, this is first class. I'll tell you what's first class. Old Navy. This says Old Navy and Sphere of High Prices. Choice Brothers! Old Navy's low prices are just what the doctor ordered. What happened? Step on it, Magic, and fly me to Old Navy. He was adopted at birth by a corporation and raised on live television without ever knowing. How are you, Truman? Vital signs are good. Yeah, <laughs> my ring cam. Is he looking at us? Do you think he knows? But the only thing they couldn't control... I'm onto something, Marlon. Something big. ...is what he'd do if he found out. Find him. <laughs> Wanna do it again? Jim Carrey, The Truman Show, rated PG. In theaters everywhere, Friday, June 5th. Dusk in beautiful Salt Lake. The NBA playoffs on TNT Western Conference Finals. It's game two. We go to the fourth. We're in the Delta Center. Los Angeles leading most of the way on top here, 71 to 70, with Doc Rivers and Reggie Theus, Kevin Harlan, Carl Malone, the headliner for Utah, and of course the centerpiece for the Lakers, Shaquille O'Neal. And this should be a great fourth quarter. Yeah, and one thing Lakers have on their side, they have a well-rested Shaquille O'Neal. Had a long break in the third quarter. He did. On the bench for over four and a half minutes. Yet they still have the lead. Van Exel, Fox, Bryant, Ori, and here's Shaq. Ori's playing on a bum leg, bad hip. Fox outside, into Shaq, bullied by... Car and he still got the sweet hook on the turnaround. And, and he turned around after he made the shot and looked at the official and said, listen, I made the shot, but he's still pushing. Lakers by three. Carl Malone over Ori. Battling it in is Carl Malone. If and now tonight he's got 26. If I'm the Jazz, I'm going wherever Robert Ori is. I mean, he's running out there like he's running on one leg, but he's still out there. Like Ricky Thea said, he's a gamer. Trying to set a screen for Van Exel. There's Bryant, the Fox, shot clock at 10. Back into Shaq. And a travel on O'Neal. That hip-hop step that he makes inside. First of all, publicized by George Carl in Seattle. And something that I'm sure Del Harris is afraid that's going to get more notice as the playoffs go on. Yeah, but I think one of the things that happened there, when he put the ball on the floor and committed to his move, he turned around, and there was three guys converging on him. I think he had to pick it up about a half a step earlier than he wanted to. And that's a problem. He didn't know if he's going to have one guy or three guys yeah. on him from play to play. Caught. Rebound by Shaq. See, in game one, all those shots were going in. They're getting the same shots. They're just not making them. One point game, Fox picked up by Chris Morris. Shot clock at 10, into Shaq, outside. Here comes Carr, as Shaq tries to plow and does for two. He did plow, and right on top of Antoine Carr's head was an elbow. Not intentional, but it was an elbow. What do you say about the elbows? What Shaq say? They're coming up tonight. They're coming up in game two. Well, I think his play is what's coming up. <laughs> Shaq is putting it on him right now. First, he used power, and this is a little finesse. I really didn't see the hit. Mike Dunleavy of the Portland Trailblazers said it best. He said, when Shaq goes up and the Lakers are flying, cover your heads and duck. I want you to take a look at Robert Ory moving around the floor. I mean, look at this. <laughs> You can't move and get anything. And he's just hobbling out there, but he's still out there. Utah just called a 20-second timeout, and they got Carr back, Hale and Hardy, and 10 and a half to play in the game. Lakers by three. Isley in with Anderson, Carr, Russell. Lone's on the bench. Morris is in. Outside Anderson. Touch pass to Russell. Doubled, and Fox swats it away. 
and a foul call on Ori. But Ori was there. You know what he's doing? He understands that he can't jump right now, so he's trying to put his body in position to draw offensive fouls. Both teams right now, Kevin, are struggling offensively, and so what the Lakers have decided to do the last three times down the court, they're going to their go-to guy. They understand their offense is struggling. Go to Shaq. Make the Lakers or make the Jazz stop him. Utah comes to within two to Reggie Theus. Hey, guys, Del Harris was talking about, hey, with Shaq back in the game, let's get back to our game of posting and running. In the third quarter, we only got the ball inside seven times. They've got the ball to Shaq the last three or four times. Lakers getting back into their game. Yeah, they're going to the big go-to guy, Reggie. I think that's pretty smart, especially when your offense is struggling. Go to a guy that you know will at least get a good shot off. And there's no question. And then what happens when you get that in the inside game, the defense tightens up, and you get back into your running game, Doc. And actual for three. Rebound by Isley. Took a big bounce. Utah the other way. Lakers back on defense. Isley could not find an open soul. He hits Anderson here. Into traffic. Out to Morris. Working on Bryant. Bryant is down. Morris is free. <laughs> he was free, but not really. Shaq was a coming. Utah's got their first lead since the first quarter, up 76-75. Into Shaq, Carr is there. Making a move is Shaq and a foul. It's on Antoine Carr. See, this game right now is turning into the second quarter of game one. Carr Malone, John Stockton sitting on the bench, yet the Jazz are making a run. 300 idea is the idea of a powerful, responsive, nimble automotive machine. 44 years later, the soul lives on. The 99 Chrysler 300M, coming late May. Well, I was seeing this young lady. That was back 1948-49. And one night I get a note from her, said she was moving cross state with my cousin Eugene. Going to Breezewood, PA, town of motels. And I thought, you know, Life may be fickle, but a bottle of Rolling Rock will never be. Wonderful beer. Different. Got that handsome, long neck. And that's the night I began my love affair with this bottle. Wait a sec. That didn't come out right at all. The potential of a true sports car is something you experience. You feel, whether you use it all or only a little. And that's the thrill and the payoff. 44 years later, the soul lives on. The 99 Chrysler 300M, coming late May. Over half of American kids are not active on a regular basis. But there are lots of fun ways to get fit. You can double dutch. Play with your dog. Jump higher. Make a move. Juggle, or at least try to. The more active you are, better you'll feel. Play fit, stay fit. Time now to take it. Look at the Ducks boy in the paint numbers, and it's all Los Angeles, as you might expect, with Shaquille O'Neal putting in 27 all inside the lane. But look at the rebounding totals. Pretty close, and, and if you're the Jazz, you're pretty happy. When you look at the Lakers' side, you would assume that the Lakers would dominate on the boards. They're really not. Well, when you know that Shaq may think about playing in the NFL, you pull that uh, cap down if you're Steve Young. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> put your head. Put your head between <laughs> your legs, baby. I agree. And hold on for dear life. <laughs> Steve Young, the quarterback. San Francisco, legendary BYU quarterback, makes his off-season home here in the Salt Lake area. Four oh. fouls on Cox. There's Steve again. He's had his bell rung quite oh. a bit in the last couple of years, enough, I tell you. Enough to warn a, a lot of concern from his agent, Lee Steinberg, and others. The post-concussion syndrome. Bryant, the move, the flight, inside, Cardi, Carr, the rebound. Yeah, but he missed a wide-open Robert Ory. you got to make that pass. And Anderson, but what a tremendous pass by Brian Russell. So you can see the negative effect. When Robert Ory was taking it out of bounds, he was still looking at Kobe Bryant. You have to hit the open guy. There's a foul, and it's called on Los Angeles. Yeah, Dale Harris has to get him out. You know, right now, composure. Ryan will take a rest. I mean, I want you to take a look at this right now. Watch Robert Orrick. 
He just can't make it up the court. He is really struggling. It's the Willis Reed of the 90s, right? Paul Reed played. They won a championship in New York. Different circumstances, but they made the same kind of severity. Morris for three. Rebound by Van Exel. Picked up by Isley. A fresh 24 for Utah. See, now it's the Lakers who are complaining. For three quarters, he's been the Jazz. And you can see the Lakers getting a little frustrated right here. Morris with Van Exel there. Size advantage for Morris. Timeout Los Angeles. Get ready to get creative. Get into a Rebel G. Go beyond snapshots. Experience the ultimate rush. Cool. Rebel G and only EOS lenses from Canon.